to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin. This is the gospel of Christ to proclaim good news unto the poor. The gospel of Christ, spreading the soul-saving message of Jesus. And now, Ben Bailey. This is the gospel of Christ. Stand in the way and see, and ask for the old path where the good way is and walk in it. Then you will find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk in it. Jeremiah chapter 6, verse number 16. We welcome you to our study of the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah, who is known as the weeping prophet of Anatoth, has a great message of hope, of restoration, and of change for God's people if they will only accept it. And so today, we hope that you've got your Bible with you, that you have it out. If you don't, we want to encourage you to stop for just a moment, get your Bible, as we're going to look to the Word of God together in our study today. Let me give you just a little bit of background to Jeremiah as we think about this book. Of course, today's lesson is being brought to you by members of the Church of Christ and congregations in your area. Would love for you to stop by and visit their assembly. You'll find people there who want to help others go to heaven who are kind and friendly and would love to sit down and discuss God's word with you. And so if you're not a, if you've never obeyed the gospel, maybe you're not a member of the Lord's church and you'd like to learn more about that, visit the local church of Christ in your area where you'll find people who are concerned about others and doing what God says. Friend, we also want to help you here at the Gospel of Christ. If you'd like to have a copy of any of our lessons on CD or DVD, we make those available to you free of charge as well as having digital downloads of those. Just go to our website, thegospelofchrist.com. From there, you can access all our lessons. All our material online is free. You can fill out a free media request form and we can send the media to you in the desired way you would like to receive that. And don't forget about the Gospel Gospel of Christ app available in the respective play stores. Great tool to keep up with our latest lessons and stay up to what we're doing, stay up to date on what we're doing as well as studying the Word of God in our fast-paced world today. The background to the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah was from the town of Anathoth, and, and Anathoth, and Anathoth was known for producing priests. It was a town where a lot of people who were of priestly lineage lived, but Jeremiah was different. He was a fiery prophet who rebuked the people. God had raised him up from a young age for that purpose. And he is one who rebuked the people for their sin and their idolatry and the hard heart that they have. And yet that came at a price to Jeremiah. Jeremiah was eventually beaten and imprisoned by the rulers of, P of the people for standing up to them and their sin in Jeremiah chapter 20 and of course in Jeremiah chapter 38 as well. But Jeremiah, what was unique about Jeremiah and what really stands out about Jeremiah is Jeremiah was a man of the book. Jeremiah 37 verse 17, Jeremiah in that context, the evil king asked a great question, is there any word from the Lord? And of course, Jeremiah had clearly told them the word from the Lord. Jeremiah 15 verse 16, we learn a little bit about Jeremiah himself. Jeremiah said, your words were found and I did eat them. And they were to me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. For I'm called by your name, O Lord God of hosts. Jeremiah was one who had devoured the word of God spiritually. And his message, his purpose was to proclaim that message out to the people of that day. But you know, one of the greatest things about Jeremiah is actually mentioned by our Lord. Jeremiah received one of the greatest compliments ever when Jesus asked his disciples, who do men say that I am? Some said Jeremiah. What a great compliment to Jeremiah that he would even be classed with or compared to the Lord. And so he must have been a great man of God and, of course, a great gospel preacher. Of course, as we think about Jeremiah's background, Jeremiah had a, he had a strong 
overriding desire to preach God's word against all odds. Jeremiah, as we mentioned, had been beaten. He was thrown in the prison, and Jeremiah kind of got discouraged as anybody would. And he said to himself, I'm not going to speak about him anymore. I'm not going to preach in his name anymore. But then God's word was in Jeremiah's heart, like a burning fire shut up in his bones. He was weary of holding it back, and he could not. The word just kind of came forth out of Jeremiah because he was so completely overwhelmed by God's word and his message that it actually changed his life in that way. Let's take a few moments today and let's think then about some practical messages, some living messages from the book of Jeremiah that applies to people and even preachers today. Jeremiah 1 verse 10, I want you to take your Bible and as you follow along, look at the words of Jeremiah in Jeremiah 1 verse 10. God says, see I this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. What was part of Jeremiah's work? Well, do you remember what Paul said to Timothy? Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Oftentimes, there's double the problems we need to deal with and address before one can begin to build up and encourage. And so God said, I've set you this day over the nations. Here's what your job is, to root out and to pull down. That's, that's a picture of maybe you've got a tree and that tree's in the way. You want to remove that, you got to get the root out and then you can pull it down. Destroy and to tear down. To, you've got to bring back things back down to the right foundation before you can build up and before you can plant. And so Jeremiah is called to stand before God's people, to point out the sin that they are involved in, to address the immorality that is going on in this nation, and to encourage people to come back to the Word of God and live as God really wants them to live. Then look at another practical lesson. Open your Bible, if you would, to Jeremiah chapter 2. And I want you to notice what the Bible says in verse 22. God says to the people of Israel, Though you wash yourself with lye and use much soap, Yet your iniquity is marked, is ever marked before me, says the Lord God. Think about this picture. They've got all the soap. They've got the best soap you can imagine. They've got the lye. They've got the soap. They've got this homemade concoction that they think is going to clean them. And God says, you can get all the soap. You can get all the laundry detergent. You can get all the bleach you want, as it were yet you've still got a sin problem. Homespun remedies for sin just won't work. They could mix up the lye and the soap in that pot and they could wash from head to toe. But their homespun remedy was not going to address the sin problem. You see, it reminds me of what Jeremiah says a little later. Jeremiah says, O Lord, I know the way of man is not in himself. It's not in man who walks to direct his own steps. I can't figure out my own way to heaven. Man cannot save himself. We've got to put our salvation in Jesus. He's the way, the truth, and the life. John chapter 14, verse number 6. And then I want you to think about another practical lesson from the book of Jeremiah. The people in Jeremiah's day, there were some smart people there. But they were smart for sin, smart for the wrong things. Look in Jeremiah chapter 4, and notice what the Bible says in verse number 22. For my people are foolish, God says. They've not known me. They are silly children. They have no understanding. Now listen to this. They are wise to do evil, but to do good, they have no knowledge. These people were acting like a silly child. These people were, as it were, throwing a tantrum. They weren't getting their way, so they just decided to do it their own way, as it were. They were wise to do evil, but to do good, they were as ignorant as it came. Well, why was that? Why were they smart for sin, but dumb when it came to doing what God wanted them to do? Because, as Jesus said, where your heart is, 
there will your treasure be also. Their desire was to follow the path of sin. You see that throughout the book of Jeremiah. They wanted to be like the other nations. They wanted to have these physical, touchable, tangible idols and these man-made, and God said, no, they're not the ones who've taken care of you. And so they got very wise and very smart and, and very sophisticated as it were for sin. But that wouldn't save them in the day of judgment. That wouldn't save them, save them when the final, when the Babylonians rolled into town. That didn't do them any good. They went into captivity because they failed to obey God. Then there's another lesson I want you to see from the book of Jeremiah, uh, like the book of Lamentations. And Jeremiah and Lamentations kind of run together. We'll be talking about some of the things mixed in between these two books because Lamentations is really just a, it's a funeral dirge. It's a funeral sermon for Jerusalem and for Israel because they failed to submit to God. And so both Lamentations and Jeremiah express this same kind of idea of how God's people people have gone from riches to rags and how they've got the wrong mentality about serving God. Now look in Jeremiah 5. You want to see how bad it was in the days of Jeremiah? Look in Jeremiah 5 and I want you to notice what the Bible says in verses 30 and 31. Jeremiah says an astonishing and horrible thing has been committed in the land. The prophets prophesy falsely. The priest rule by their own authority or power, and my people love to have it so. But then God asked this question, but what will you do in the end? This, this was something that was just so perplexing to Jeremiah, an astonishing and amazing and terrible thing has happened. Well, what is it? Prophets are out there prophesying lies, much like Jeremiah or Isaiah chapter five, where that's what the people wanted. Prophets are out prophesying falsely. They're crying out peace and safety and don't worry about uh, Babylon and Nebuchadnezzar will never get in here and we're still God's people, just go about. And they're all uh, out telling lies. Prophets prophesy falsely. Priests are ruling by their own authority. They don't have God's word to back up what the priests are doing but they're still ruling by their own authority. But here's the worst part of it all. Those prophets that were lying to them, the priests that were not following the law of God, my people, God said, love to have it so. They don't want any different. They're doing that because the people allow it and the people want it and they're just going along with the people. Friend, we need to be a people who, who want what God wants. We need to be a people who will stand up for what God says in, his, in the word, whether it's for matters of religion, whether it be matters of morality, right and wrong, whatever it may be. We need to want and to desire and to ask for what has God said? How does God want us to do these matters? And, and, and here's why. That last question God asked, prophets are prophesying falsely, priests rule by their own authority. My people want it that way. What are you going to do in the end? When Nebuchadnezzar comes in and lays waste to the city of Jerusalem, you're going to wish it hadn't have been that way, God says. Friend, what about today? Is there not a final day coming? Jesus promised that one day he will come back. Heaven and earth will pass away, but God's word will never pass away. The Lord's coming in flaming fire to take vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel. We may want, we may ask for a false message. We may want things done religiously different than you find in the Bible, and that may be what everybody wants, and people may just go right along with that. But on the day of judgment, what good will that really do? If I want to be judged by the word of God, John 12, verse 48, that false message, that false authority, doing something because that's what everybody wants, friend, that really won't get us anything. And so we need to realize following God and his will is ultimately the most important thing. Then I want you to take your Bible and look with me in Jeremiah chapter 6. Here is a powerful passage about what the people needed versus what they wanted. Look in Jeremiah chapter 6, verse number 16. Thus says the Lord, stand in the ways and see. 
and ask for the old paths where the good way is and walk in it, then you'll find rest for your souls. But they said, listen to this, we will not walk in it. And so Jeremiah's plea is, is much the same. Go back to God. Stop doing what you want to do. Stop trying to have it your way. The old Burger King philosophy, have it your way won't work. You've got to stop doing that and you've got to come back to me. Ask for the old paths, the good way, and then you'll find rest for your soul. And God says, this isn't just the old path. It's good. You'll find rest. It'll bless you. Your land and your people will be protected. But the people so foolishly said, we don't want God and we don't want his way anymore. And so as we think about this idea, friend, let's realize today the old paths, God's way as found in the Bible is still the right way. It, it, it may look outdated to some, but friend, the Word of God is just as living and active and powerful as it's ever been. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. It's still, the old way still has the power to save. James 1, verse 21. It still points men and women toward Jesus, the way, and the cross that saves. And so we feel like, we feel like as a society, we've progressed and we've come a long way. And all these things we understand. Wait a minute now. God's way is still the right way. It's still the good way. God says, if you walk in it, I'll bless you. But too many times people sadly want to have it their own way and do what they want. Here's the problem. We've got to a point where we've become desensitized to sin. Would you open your Bible to Jeremiah chapter 8? Let me show you what the people had faced then, how they became desensitized to sin, and how we've done the same. Jeremiah chapter 8. Look in verse number 12. Were they ashamed, God asked, when they committed abominations? No, they were not at all ashamed, nor did they know how to blush. Therefore, they shall fall among those who fall. In the time of her punishment, they shall be cast down, says the Lord. Imagine something sinful like this happening to a people that God led by the hand to deliver them from the bondage of Egypt that he fed and took care of in the wilderness, that he led them into that land flowing with milk and honey and, and every item of their heart was completely taken care of. To those people, God said, you've got so bad that you don't even blush for sin anymore? Imagine the most heinous thing you could ever imagine. And that to them wasn't any big deal anymore. Friend, I wonder if we're not at that point sometimes in our society today. We don't even realize what marriage is. We don't even know what a man or a woman is. If a person wants to be a cat, if they're a human, they think they're a cat, that's okay. Friend, where did all this come from? Things that people used to be ashamed of, that we used to understand from God's Word were morally wrong. And only just commonplace doesn't even bother us anymore. Friend, that's not something for a people of God, nor is it something for a society to be proud of. There are things we ought to be ashamed of. Sin is shameful. Those who do wrong, that's shameful. Immorality, things that are against the laws of God on morality, Christians ought to be ashamed of that. But instead, we live in a society where it's almost like we're putting that out in the front, we're making that a badge of honor, and if all these immoral things you can put up as your... Friend, that's just not. We get to a point where sin no longer bothers us and we become so desensitized that that's not what we need or want anymore, we've come to a really low spot as the people of God. And so how do we, how do we get back to where we need to be? We've got to go back to focusing on and thinking about and putting the Word of God in our hearts. It's not my way or man's way that saves. It's God's way. Let me show you that from the book of Jeremiah. Look in Jeremiah chapter 10. Take your Bible and look in Jeremiah chapter 10 and notice what Jeremiah says. Verse number 23. Oh Lord, I know the way of man is not in himself. What do you mean? It's not in man who walks. 
works to direct his own path. You leave man to figure it out for himself, and the mess that we're in is what you're going to get, Jeremiah says. Same idea is true today. The way of man, how a man ought to live, how he ought to talk, how he ought to act how he ought to be involved in relationships and how he ought to relate to his fellow man and other people. The way to do that is not in man himself. It's in God who has the ability to direct our steps. Friend, if we want to we want to have real direction in life, we want to go the right way, God's got to direct our steps. I've got to realize the Bible is God's divine word. This country was a nation. The Lord's church was a people who were built on thus saith the Lord and on the Bible as God's word. The further we get away from that, the more our problems increase. We want to solve those problems. It's not by getting further away from God and his word. It's by drawing back to almighty God and his divine word. We need to ask what does the scripture say? Uh, Romans 4, verse 3. We need to ask, is there any word from the Lord? Jeremiah 37, verse 17. We need to demand what God wants us to do and to seek his way and more than anything to follow that path to the best of our ability. We want to be like Jeremiah. Jeremiah 15, verse 16, Jeremiah said, Your words were found, and I did eat them, and they were to me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. Do we realize what a great joy it is to fill your life with the Word of God? You see, in the long ago, the psalmist said, Your word I've hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Jesus echoed the same idea when he said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. If I want to get in the right way, have a life that is blessed and ha happy as the man who walks not in the counsel of ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scornful, but happy is the man whose delight is in the law of the Lord. You want to get right with God, have a joy, make God's word your passion, love that that word and live it in your life each and every day. You see, even in troubling times, that love for God's word helped Jeremiah. Look in Jeremiah chapter 20, and I want you to notice what the Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 20. Look in verse number nine with me. Jeremiah had been beaten. He'd been thrown into prison. Then I said, I'll not make mention of him nor speak in his name but his word was in my heart like a burning fire shut up in my bones i was weary of holding it back and i could not during the challenging times of our life as well when we face crisis when we face problems when we deal with disease or whatever it may be if you've got god's word hid in your heart Friend, that burning word, that burning desire, it's going to come out. It's going to help. It's going to remind us what's right, what's good, what really matters, and that above all else, we need to seek God and His kingdom because that word, my friend, that word, the word of God, is the most powerful, life-changing word you could ever imagine. Look in Jeremiah 23, and I want to show you that. Jeremiah chapter 23. See a picture here of the power of God's Word in verse number 29. God says, Is not my word like a fire, says the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces? You remember when, when Jesus was walking down the road with the two men as they traveled to Emmaus, and he was kind of hidden from them, but he began to discuss the scriptures with them, and he began to point out everything just happened and how that he, the Messiah, had filled that. And as they contemplated that, they said later, Did not our hearts burn within us? As we travel down the road and he opened the scriptures to us, Luke 24, verse 32, friend, we need a good case today of spiritual heartburn. We, we need to have in our hearts that God's word that's like a fire, that breaks the rock in pieces, that, that changes the hard heart, gets rid of the things we don't need, and helps us to be what God wants us to be. That word, the word of God is so powerful if we'll just put it into our heart and our life and use it every day. 
But friend, understand well that when we talk about the Word of God, we're talking about especially for how a Christian should live, how a Christian should act, and how a Christian should be saved. We're not talking about living under the Ten Commandment law. We're talking about the new law of Jesus Christ. Did you know Jeremiah prophesied that the old law and the Old Testament would one day be old and there would be a new covenant coming? Look in Jeremiah chapter 31. Verse 31, Jeremiah says, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant which I broke, though I was a husband to them, says the Lord. God says, there's a day coming when I'm going to give a new covenant. It's not like the Ten Commandment covenant that I gave on Sinai, in this covenant, no longer will you say to every man, know the Lord. They'll all know him. And in this covenant, God says, I'll be merciful to their sins. Their lawless deeds I'll remember no more. Now hear the divine commentary on this. Hebrews 8, verses 8 through 13 says, and quotes Jeremiah 31, 31, in that he says a new covenant, He's made the first obsolete. When we talk about living according to God's law, friend, I believe, as, as most people who believe the Bible, that every bit of it's the Word of God. But the law I'm living under today, the covenant that I'm under, is the new covenant of Jesus Christ. And friend, as we seek to do God's will, as we strive to please Him, as we make it our aim in life to not be like Israel, but to be people who want to follow the Word of God, let's have the attitude of Jeremiah 37, 17. On every matter, morally, religiously, doctrinally, let's ask, is there any word from the Lord on that? Not what's popular, what does society say, what do people want to do, what do religious leaders say? What does God say? Friend, you keep that attitude. You'll be a lot closer to following God and doing His will. And so we're glad you joined us today for our study of the book of Jeremiah. Join us next time as we study more from the powerful Word of God. Today's closed captions are brought to you by Christian Family Bookstore in Chattanooga, Tennessee. We encourage you to visit thechristianfamilybookstore.com for all your Christian book needs. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the Churches of Christ with its whole aim to take the Gospel to the whole world. We do that through TV, Internet, free media, and streaming. Our motto truly is to take the whole gospel to the whole world, and we believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious programs today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On-demand downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call 844 844- Six Gospel. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your this smartphone. Is the